Hey parents, families, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I know with the quarantine, it can seem like, man, we're running out of stuff to do. We want ways to connect with our kids while we're home. So what I thought would be a good idea, and hopefully this works, is to just put some videos out there for some fun family activities that you guys can implement at home. You don't have to do it on Tuesday night when we release them. Uh, the idea is just to give you something to look forward to. You can uh, recreate what I do here in the videos. You can use the video themselves when we do games. But uh, the first thing that we're gonna do then I thought would be a lot of fun is an activity. It's fun to do together as a family. It's fun to do by yourself. But more importantly, it's tasty. And that is making pizza. All right, for the first part, making the pizza crust, uh, these are the things that you will need. One, you will need five cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. Next item is one and three quarters teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon instant yeast, and one and three quarter cups of water, preferably at room temperature. All right, so you've got all your ingredients that you need. Let's make some pizza. The first thing we're gonna do is take our five cups of flour, pour it into a nice mixing bowl. Now, if you have one of those uh, kitchen counter mixers, uh, then that will be fine. You can actually use that to mix these ingredients. This is just a very simple, uh, it's a basic Napolitana pizza dough. It's uh, just a very few ingredients and it's an easy one to do. That's why I decided to go with this recipe. Uh, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is grab your salt. And that is gonna be one, and three quarters teaspoon of salt. One and three quarter. All right, next is the yeast. So for the yeast, you're gonna do one teaspoon of instant yeast. All right. All right, so one of the ways that you can doctor this just a little bit if you want is to use a whole wheat flour. And what you'll do for that is this just kind of gives it a little bit of an earthy taste. Um, it's a little bit different than just the flour. It adds a little different bend to the flavor profile. And what that's, what that's gonna be is one tablespoon of whole wheat flour for every cup. So for this recipe, we're gonna do five tablespoons. Yeah. You don't have to do that. That's just something to change the flavor profile a little bit as you go along. Uh, I like to always stir my dry ingredients just a little bit, get them working there. I'm just kind of spread some of that yeast around. Next, what we're gonna do is pour in the water. Now, uh, the water that we're using is going to be one and three quarter cups of water. And you really want that to be at room temperature if you can. You're gonna pour that in. And now comes the fun part. So we're just gonna start mixing. Uh, if you are using a countertop mixer, you can just put it on a reduced speed. Um, you know, somewhere on the low, mid to low, and uh, make sure that you have a dough hook while you're mixing that. But if you're doing it by hand, you can start out with a spoon, uh, just some way to kind of mix everything together. And eventually, as you incorporate kind of all the, the flour and the water and the yeast together, you'll actually switch over to doing this by hand, uh, which will be which, which will be something a little different, but we'll talk about that as we get into it. So you're gonna mix this, you're probably gonna mix this for about, about four to five minutes until it starts to incorporate into a nice coarse dough ball. So if uh, while you're mixing, and I've switched to mixing by hand, if while you're mixing you notice that you've got a little bit of flour still left in the bottom and you feel like maybe your dough ball's just not sticking very well, you can add just a splash of water to it just to incorporate into the dough ball and then go right back into kneading. And if you feel like, well, hey, I actually don't have all that flour in the bottom, what you can do is just dip your hands in a little bit of flour and then go back to kneading by hand. After about five minutes of kneading the dough, uh, you should have a ball that looks something like this. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna throw it back in the bowl and we're gonna let it sit for about right, five so minutes. We let the dough rest for about five minutes. And now you're gonna keep the kneading process, again, doing the same thing like you did before. You may notice the consistency of the dough feels a little bit different now. Uh, you might feel like it's a little more pliable in your hands, uh, kind of like a Play-Doh almost. 
and you're going to do the same thing. Just keep kind of folding over and kneading the dough. If you have a kneading bowl, uh, that's fine. You can use that. You can maybe put a little bit of flour on a countertop and just work on it there. I like to just do mine in the bowl because I can constantly kind of turn the bowl as I'm kneading the dough. And you're going to do this kneading for about two to three minutes. And then after two to three minutes, you're going to give it a break. Okay, so we took all our dry ingredients, we added them, we added the water, and then we stirred everything in our bowl. Again, if you're using a countertop mixer, that's fine. Uh, just make sure you're using a dough hook, and you can use it on a lower setting. You want to do low to mid. You don't want it to go too fast, uh, and make sure you keep an eye on it. Don't just set it and forget it. Uh, for those of us mixing by hand, I like to start with a spoon, and then as I start, the dough starts to incorporate into a ball, then I kind of switch over to using my hands. Um, for those of us who maybe found like there's a little too much flour in the bottom of the bowl, we added just a little bit of water to help incorporate the rest of that remaining flour into our dough ball. Uh, if you said that, hey man, my dough ball is just way too sticky, then we just put a little bit of flour maybe in our fingertips and started to incorporate that while we were kneading by hand. So we kneaded for about five minutes, letting the yeast activate and work all the flour into a dough ball, uh, and then we let it rest for five minutes. Then we came back and we kneaded again for approximately two to three minutes, and then we let it rest for five more minutes. The next step of the process is we are going to knead it once again for about three minutes, and then we'll be done with the kneading process. All right, so we let the dough set for five minutes, and now we're kneading it for an additional two minutes. After we've kneaded for a couple of extra minutes, what we're gonna do now is, uh, you should have a nice round of dough ball, and what we're gonna do is add just a little bit of olive oil to the bowl, just enough to kind of brush over the ball of dough. Then we're gonna cover it with saran wrap and we're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes. All right, so it's been 30 minutes and our dough has sat out on the countertop, on the table somewhere, it's been covered uh, with saran wrap. And now what we're gonna do is take the saran wrap off. You might notice that your dough has grown a little bit. It may not be very noticeable. Um, you might smell some of the yeast as it's been a little bit more active now, uh, but we're gonna peel that off and then we're just gonna ball it again put it right back in the same bowl and then put it in the fridge overnight. We're gonna take some time to make a marinara sauce that we can go on our pies. Now, if you say, hey man, making dough is enough, that's all we can handle, then that's fine. Uh, you can buy, there's plenty of pizza sauces that you can buy already made at the grocery store. But if you'd like to make one, I actually like to use this as an all-purpose marinara uh, just for our house. Uh, when we make spaghettis, whatever it may be, uh, it's a great sauce. Uh, has a really good flavor profile and I'll teach you how to make that right now. You'll need one can of crushed tomatoes and that's going to be the big can, a quarter teaspoon of ground pepper, one teaspoon of basil, one teaspoon oregano, one tablespoon garlic powder, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, and one teaspoon of salt. Now, if you say I don't have any of this stuff, you can actually just buy an Italian seasoning that's already got uh, most of the oregano and basil and things like that in it. You can use that, plus add the garlic, salt, and pepper, and you'll be fine with that for a marinara sauce. Now, one of the things I like to do, I like to add two tablespoons of brown sugar, which we will not do today, uh, but that just gives a little bit of extra flavor and a little bit of sweetness, and uh, my kids really like that especially. So let's get started. We'll add our crushed tomatoes. One quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. That's the perfect amount of pepper. Uh, one teaspoon of basil. One teaspoon of oregano. One tablespoon of garlic powder. Unless you are Italian, then just keep adding until the spirit of your ancestors whisper, stop my child. Two tablespoons of red wine vinegar and one teaspoon of salt. All right, next what you're gonna do is just mix and stir and stir and mix. Again, if, uh, if you say, hey, I wanna you know, add a little bit of something different to it, then you can add those two tablespoons of brown sugar. Uh, also, if you say, hey, I'm not a big fan of the crushed tomatoes, that's what I like. It's a little bit thicker. If you say, hey, that's a little too much, uh, and then what you can do is just use actual tomato sauce instead, which you do not need as much if you decide to use a tomato sauce. You can just use a regular size can, add a little bit of water to it, and you've got a nice thin sauce that you can use. But I like the crushed tomatoes. Just mix it there, and you're done. 
And you can actually uh, just stick this in a container you have, you can cover it, whatever bowl is that you're using it in, and you can just set that in the refrigerator. I like to go ahead and do all this prep work so that it's done, and I don't have as much to do uh, the day of that I'm gonna be making pizzas. All right, so we've made our dough, we've made our sauce, or we've gone to the store and bought some sauce. Just remember these few important things. One, you need to take your dough out of the refrigerator and let it sit two hours before you plan to bake it in the oven. So two hours before you plan to bake, take the dough out and let it sit. Another thing, this recipe makes six dough balls. So after you've let it sit overnight and you pull it out, go ahead as soon as you pull it out of the refrigerator and divide it into six equal size or as equal as you can, equal size dough balls. And don't forget, you need mozzarella cheese. Lots and lots of cheese in my opinion. And don't forget to purchase whatever additional toppings you may want. Unless you're one of those weirdos who just want cheese on their pizza. It's the day after we've set our dough in the fridge. It is now two hours before we're getting ready to use it. So what we're gonna do is take the dough out. We're gonna divide it into six individual dough balls. We're gonna place it in a pan and we'll just let it sit there for the next couple hours until we are ready to bake. Now, here's one important thing. If you are cooking with a pizza stone, you want to put it about uh, midway into your oven and then crank your oven to its highest setting, around 500 to 550 degrees. If you have a convection oven, even better. Go ahead and put it on its convection setting and just about an hour before you're prepared to cook, go ahead and put the pizza stone in, let it get nice and hot. We don't wanna start with a cold pizza stone. It's very important that you have a hot pizza stone. So again, two hours before cooking with the dough, one hour with the pizza stone. All right, let's take a look at our dough now. So your dough probably has risen overnight. That's a good thing. That's a sign that our yeast is working. Um, that's a sign of a very good dough to come. So before you dump it out of your container, just take a little bit of your flour and just sprinkle your countertop, your table, uh, whatever it is, just kind of a little bit over the surface there. This is just going to help with any moisture that might be in the dough. And then we're going to take our dough out. All right. Our dough comes out, and if you want, you can just kind of scoop up some of that flour that you've put across the table. And then right here, you've got a nice, go ahead and press just gently, just a little bit, and kind of push some of that air out. You might hear a little bit of hissing, but we're just gonna release some of that gas out of the dough. Then we're gonna take a knife, and again, this recipe makes six dough balls. So we're just gonna divide it into six. So I like I've got six individual pieces of dough here. Now we need to make them into dough balls. So there's a way that you can do that. And I call it the crab. I've heard to uh, refer to as that as well by other people. And what you're gonna do is just kind of squish it down and then you're just gonna roll the dough around in your hand. Now, right now, I have all of this flour on my surface. So if you'll notice how it's just kind of scooting around, the dough ball is not actually rolling underneath my hand. So there's a way that we can fix that to make the surface a little bit more sticky. And we're just gonna add a few sprinkles of water. So you're just gonna add a few sprinkles of water to your countertop, all right? And then you're gonna kinda of put that, that dough ball right underneath your hand, so it's kinda of this shape here. And you'll notice that it kinda of grips the table a little bit more. Gently press into your palms and you'll start to feel the dough ball just kinda of move around a little bit. You'll come out with a nice dough ball like that. So what I'm gonna do, as I roll these out, I'm just gonna transfer them to an oiled pan that I have. I'm gonna do that for the remaining five pieces. Okay, so we've rolled all of our dough balls. Now what we're gonna do is set them in a pan, and you can just cover this with saran wrap, a towel, anything like that, and just let it sit on your countertop. So before we start rolling out our pizza, there's just a few things that I think are essential to have. One, a rolling pin is very helpful if, uh, if you're not quite able to spread it by hand, especially if you were doing this with your kids, a rolling pin is essential. Something else that you'll need that I prefer is parchment paper. So parchment paper is great uh, because it will keep your pizza stone from getting really nasty and grease being all over it. Uh, parchment paper is very helpful, especially if you are using just like a cookie sheet to slide it on and off. It's very important uh, to use parchment paper. Uh, another thing that I have 
is a pizza peel. Now, I know everyone's not gonna have this, um, so again, if you have a cookie sheet, you can just make your pizza on the parchment paper, set the parchment paper on the cookie sheet, and slide it off onto your pizza stone. And if you don't have a pizza stone, then you can just bake it on the cookie sheet with the parchment paper. The parchment paper is really just for ease of cleaning after the fact, and if you do have a stone, again, it does keep that nice and clean. And then you need something to cut your pizza with at the end of the day. This thing here is great. It's a nice little rocker. Uh, it's fantastic. My wife and I love this thing. It is totally worth its weight in gold if you're going to be eating a lot of pizza. Uh, so, let's get started. Oh, are you girls ready for pizza night? Yeah! All right, let's go get started. All right, so once you've got your dough ball, it helps sometimes. I like to push from the outsides. Lilia has the smash approach. Um, Abby and Bella are both using the rollers. But I kind of like to push out the sides with my thumbs and just kind of work my way around and just kind of feed it. And you'll notice it starts to spread out just a little bit as I do that. Kind of pushing from the center out towards the sides and you'll notice it may start to stretch a little bit and give way. And that's quite okay. That's exactly what we want. So we've been stretching out our pizza dough a little bit here. You're just kind of pulling a little bit. These uh, pizza doughs are not gonna be very large, okay? Now, if you're using a roller, obviously they will be. Um, but if you notice, Abby's here. She's been rolling hers with a roller and it's about the same size as mine. And so for this here, in order for it to hold, it's not gonna be a regular, like a big New York style pizza. These are gonna be smaller. And if you start to stretch right here in the middle, that's okay. That's not a problem if you've got some thin spots. If you do happen to kind of break through and get a tear, what you can do is just pinch the, the dough together, press it back together, all right? And then you can go back to just kind of pulling the dough apart. And then everybody's favorite part, but these pizzas aren't very good for it, is to flip, just like that, all right? So, these pizzas are ready for sauce. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's get some sauce and cheese. All right, so we've got our sauce. Let's get to saucing. I like to dump a, a nice healthy spoonful in the middle and then just use the back side of the spoon and just in a circular pattern, start pushing it out to the sides. Hey, what? That brief time I worked at Domino's is really paying off right now. All right, the next part is the cheese. You guys ready? This is a favorite part in our household. Yes, because half the time it makes it in their mouth. Is that looking up? You know, cheese is relative. It really is. It's whatever you decide that is best. That's how much cheese you put on a pizza. I like to kind of sprinkle mine around a little bit. Next part's the toppings. There's another one they're eating. No, that's not the way this works. All right. Mine look like a salmon. Absolutely. All right, we've got our pie, and it's time to put it in the oven. Let's go. A little shimmy off of the fuel there. If your oven's been heated at 550, it shouldn't take but uh, maybe about five or six minutes. All right. We're gonna take our pizza out of the oven here, it's still in our parchment paper. Man, doesn't that look good? We're gonna come right this way, slide it off the parchment onto the cutting board. Just bask in the glory that is a delicious looking pizza. And then we're gonna cut it up, 